We appear to be all right. Well, there's definitely something happened with a little, little, little issue with Twitch. That's okay. Do do. Oh yeah, we're back. Uh, apparently, a couple other streams dropped as well. No big deal. Okay, let's, let me just recap. Let me just recap what we did, which wasn't much to start with, because uh, this will probably be where most people start watching the highlight. We made a roux out of butter and flour, which is just equal parts of butter and flour by weight, not by volume. Looking for a nice pasty consistency when you do that. Um, all you do is melt down the butter at a really low temperature and then add flour a little bit at a time until we had this uh, kind of pasty goodness. Cooked it down for just a minute so that it became uh, cohesive. And that's that. We also started, we also started rice. Uh, all we did for the rice was bring it to a boil, bring it to a super low temperature, then we're going to let it go for about 20 minutes, which I'm actually going to set a timer now because that's a good idea. And then we'll get to making the velouté. Yes, yeah, like Play-Doh or Gak. It's more like Gak when you're cooking it, like uh, Mr. Peeve said. But roux, roux is a very simple thing to cook. It's uh, just a great, great thickening agent for whatever. Okay, but what velouté is is chicken stock that is thickened by 10% of its weight or 10% of its volume in roux. We're not going to be doing exactly 10% because, well. Or not. So, for example, if I was going to do a pure velute, we have 32 fluid ounces of chicken stock. Well, so we'd use 3.2 ounces of roux. We have quite a bit more than that, and that's okay. Uh, Encryptio, no, no. I'm not gonna say I never scrape my knives, but that noise, that noise and me do not get along. Okay, so now we have our roux cooling down. Okay, one more thing about roux. Uh, if you're adding it to a hot liquid, you want it to be room temperature. If you're adding it to a cold liquid, you want it to be hot. So we're, we made the roux first so it can cool down and become more like room temperature. Yeah, it's a chicken broth sauce, and it's a base sauce, so you can do anything you want with it. You can add anything into it. We're going to add spinach. We're going to make a spinach velouté uh, in this instance. That is a really horrible sound um, in Cryptio. Um, Elevets, I've talked about my living situation many times. I'm sure I'll do it again, but now is not the time or the place. See, I do that, Panoinki. I scrape the fork on my teeth, and I know it really annoys some people, but I do it. All right, so we got this lovely triple wash spinach. We're just going to chop spinach. It's not going to be anything crazy. Now, I trust the spinach. Most spinach is ridiculously clean. If you go to like a farmer's market and buy spinach, please wash it. Wash the hell out of it. But um, this kind of spinach, not too worried about it. Especially not since it's getting put into molten hot liquid. Now, spinach is a funny thing. It looks like a lot of spinach, but it really cooks down to almost nothing. Um, you can go fancy and chiffon on it like we did before. That makes a really pretty sauce. Uh, for this application, I'm just going to chop it. Oh, hey, I don't have my... Living, living dangerously right now. So let's just get folded into the sauce towards the end and it'll all just kind of melt down and look pretty and taste good. 
I wanted to do this specifically because this is a nice simple meal that I really enjoyed eating when I worked in kitchens and stuff that was always laying around. We always had some velouté and some rice and some chicken and all that stuff. So uh, I wanted to do this just for uh, the sake of something. It's I know I've eaten a lot of, no, it's not the fanciest meal in the world, but it's cheap as hell and quite tasty. Another good thing that you can do um, to add flavor into your velouté is add like herbs. Add lots of herbs. You can add thyme. You can add garlic, you can add rosemary, uh, whatever you want. It's truly just a base sauce for what you want to do. Ballpark cost, I mean, really not very much. This is just chicken stock right now. We're going to do a pretty pure velouté. It'll have salt and pepper in it, but not much else. Yep, you can saute broccoli as well. Uh, really, whatever you want. What about love? Mm. Chicken, I, I buy like yeah, I buy my chicken stock pre-cooked. I will be doing stocks uh, at a later date. Um, I believe it's week six. I'll do stocks. The broth's on a pretty aggressive heat right now because I want it to get up to like a, a low simmer. Yeah, no love in this meal, just smug. Well, if you're gonna cook simple stuff, you gotta do it with some love, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, like I have turkey carcasses in my freezer right now, which I can make chicken stock out of. Also, do going to do the meat fabrication one uh, coming up here soon, and we'll use the extra bits of beef to make stock out of that. Alright, now we get to do the fun part, which is cleaning chicken. Gross. Gross. Oh yeah, the average cost of this, I mean really, uh, chicken stock, like a couple bucks for a thing, rice, dirt cheap, you don't have to use chicken breasts, you can use whatever chicken you want to, extremely cheap, about as cheap as you're going to get for a starch and, starch and protein meal. Yeah, chicken stock, poultry stock, about the same thing. Yeah, turkey stock's going to take a little bit different than chicken stock, but uh, they're all birds. Alright, they're just going to clean off the fatty stuff here. There's only a couple pieces you need to watch out for on a chicken breast. The main thing you got to watch out for is this little groove. That's where the wing connects. That's where the wing connects. One of the cheapest things you can do, which I'll show you how to do um, here in a little bit, is break down your own chicken. Buying a whole chicken is one of the cheapest purchases you can make as far as meat goes. And if you know how to break it down yourself, uh, it's good. But if you don't check in this little groove, not only is there a big piece of sinew in there, on occasion you'll find a little like piece of bone or something. So always cut that out. All right. Mmm, chicken. All right. So I'm just gonna cube this up for for this. Nothing, nothing crazy. Let's do cubes. Mmm. I really. I, chicken, I love eating it, but I really dislike that slimy texture it has on the outside. It's pretty gross. Chicken's just a dirty bird. I'm trying to keep this uh, this couple months segment of Cooking with Frag incredibly simple. Um, I know a lot of people are very afraid to cook, and probably rightfully so, but uh, if you can start with the basics and go off of that, uh, it's really not, it's not as bad as you think. Okay, we got our pile of chicken. Awesome. But if you can even learn how to cook really basic stuff, like uh, rice and chicken and all that, it's, it's so much healthier and cheaper than having to cook, or have somebody cook for you. It right, looks like my rice might be on a little bit high. Let's go check that. Okay. I'm not quite used to this new stove yet. So, oh, definitely cooks hotter than my previous one by quite a bit.
I have um I have a I believe it is a global G eight. See if I have it. What is it? EQ. Should have a link to it on there. I have a lot of global knives. I really like them. They're very high quality. Uh, they've lasted me a very long time. I've had that knife for <sighs> almost seven years now. Alright, we're going to start heating this up, so we're going to sear our chicken in, so... Alright, see, we got a nice steam coming off of our chicken stock now, so we can really... That's some dark chicken stock, I'll say so myself. Mmm. Mmm, chicken. We're going to cook the chicken very simply, just salt and pepper and oil, that's it. Once again, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Not everybody likes to eat simple stuff. I really enjoy simple food, I think it tastes better that way. Rather than trying to mask everything, if you can if you can nail three or four ingredients, um, it's good stuff. Don't have to have terribly complicated spices or anything to have have a good meal. So I really just added enough to coat coat the outside of the pan. Yeah, simple home cooked. I mean, sure, would I love to eat a five course French meal every day? Hell yeah, I would. I don't have I don't have five hours to make that happen. So uh, I think most of us eat pretty simply. Uh, if I want to eat something really fancy, I usually go out and have somebody else cook it for me. Well, Strago, if you buy a kitchen knife, I mean, what, 80 eighty, a hundred dollars for a really good knife, it's going to last you at least ten years, so... And if you do cook enough, you definitely get your, your money, you get your money back um, on your, on your investment. Hell yeah, if you like sriracha, you can hit that blue table with sriracha. Go for it. There ain't a damn thing wrong with that. Alright, so... I'm going to grab a whisk. And we're going to start spooning some of this uh, roux into the blue table. Alright, I'm fearing for my rice right now. What is the time to say about it? All right, my oil's super hot. We're gonna get some roux into the velouté, and then I'm gonna start cooking the chicken. All right, so it takes about 10 minutes to break down a roux in any in any sauce. So you want to add a little bit, and then stir it in. Now it's not going to thicken right away. You got to wait for the flour to cook into whatever you're doing. So you, the mistake you can make is adding too much too soon, and then say, "Oh, it's not thick enough. I need to add more." Give it a minute to cook down, and then make a decision from there. Yeah, you can always thin it out with water and stuff if you want to, but um, better better too little and then adding more later than too much. Just giving it a really aggressive whisk to make sure that all the chunks of roux are getting getting broken down. Wustov is a great knife brand. Uh, I've always stuck with Globe myself, but I will say that Wustov has some of the highest quality out there. All right, chicken. Big handful of raw chicken. Mm. Just like any other meat, what we're looking for is a nice browning on the outside. That is, uh, that's number one. Just trying to get it broken up a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to wait for it to sear. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes, it is a very important. Every time you touch raw chicken, you touch something with raw meat, uh, it's a really good idea to wash your hands. What type of cooking do I use? The, the, the heat kind? Alright, um, we're going to call that good. My heat was a little bit high to start with. Uh, anytime you cook rice, it's always better if it sits on the counter for about 10 minutes. We're done with the cutting board now, so we'll clean that later. We're getting there, need a little bit more heat. Uh, to break it down properly, you want like a simmer, which is just a lazy bubble. Okay, salt, number one. Salt's good. Pepper. Once we're fully thickened on the sauce, we'll, um, fully thickened on the sauce, I'm going to taste it, and then we'll decide how to season it from there. Yeah, gumbo is something that takes a really long period of time to cook. Uh, Will I ever do chili? Maybe. Uh, basically the way I have it set out right now is I'm doing two months worth of content at a time. So uh, if you do the Cooking with Frag info, I have two months and then I'll take two weeks off and decide what the next two months section would be. But the, I, the, the hope for me is to showcase things in the first, second, third, fourth week that end up uh, stacking on top of each other so they actually build skills. So like uh, we're going to end up doing meat fabrication, then I'm going to show how to make stock out of the scrap, and then I'm going to show how to make French onion soup out of, um, out of the different stocks that we make, so on and so forth. How do you handle chunks of food sticking together in the pan when you're tossing it? They never cook right, so I end up splitting them with a spatula. That's a good question. Okay, uh, number one thing for that is hot pan. Uh, number two is when they cook, they'll start separating apart. So yeah, you could you could flip them around with the spatula, but the the main thing that's gonna happen is keep flipping them while they're uh, while they're cooking. It'll kind of just naturally happen. There's very few things will actually just stick together forever. Okay, potatoes. But if you have a really hot pan, potatoes shouldn't. If you have a really hot pan, potatoes shouldn't. Okay, we're starting to get there with the thickness of the sauce. Don't want like a gravy consistency, but you definitely want more than more than the liquid. No, I would never be on Iron Chef, but uh, you guys have talked about. All right, not quite there. But you see, now that it's cooked in Cryptio, like uh, everything fell apart, so there's no more pieces stuck together. Uh, potatoes are probably the worst because they have so much starch in them. But hot pan's always going to be, uh, hot pan's always going to be your friend. But but uh, chopped chopped, I might uh, I might figure out a way for somebody to. Uh, Secretly get somebody else in my house a shopping list, and the viewers could we could do like a chop challenge with uh, with me. So I just come come uh, wake up and start with a bag of mystery ingredients and see what we could do. I'm sure the viewers would troll the crap out of me with some weird ingredients. Have to go down to the Asian market to find, but uh. Maybe maybe for a couple months down the road, that would be uh, that'd be a fun thing for. Well, I'm sure it'd be fun for you guys, maybe not so much for me. Feels so weird, like, I, I love cooking, like, when I wake up and stuff, but, like, I literally woke up right before the cast today. Call me a lazy bum, but I needed some beauty sleep. Because clearly I'm lazy, I don't stream very much. Don't provide much entertainment for the site or anything. Just a lazy bum. Okay, we get a welcome to the Dapper for Skin Benton. Thank you. Welcome to the Dapper. Okay, so let's just recap what we've done so far. We've cooked one cup of rice. 
Very simply, brought it to a boil, brought it down to a very low temperature, put a lid on it, and let it sit till the water is evaporated. We're sauteing cubed chicken, trying to get a nice crust on the outside. And we made a volute, and a volute is 10% of chicken stock's volume in weight in roux, which sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You basically just add some roux until you get a nice uh, viscosity on your sauce. All right, volute, once again, is a mother sauce. Uh, if you look up what a mother sauce is, like, look, look up what can I make with volute. There's going to be, like, 50 or 60 different uh, certified sauces that are considered, you know, I guess French approved that you can do with volute. So this is just the, the base for anything that you want, want it to be. And make sure you use the correct cooking. Trademark that. Yes, I will be doing a cooking of frag featuring duck. Absolutely. I love duck. I love duck a lot. Like a bech bechamel is another uh, another mother sauce. Espanol. Uh, believe it or not, mayonnaise is a mother sauce. Not in the way you think, though. All right, we're just waiting for some of the water to cook off of this. We're starting to get a little bit of brown on the one side, but uh, don't want to don't want to flip it too soon. How do you get duck, and how much more expensive than chicken? It's going to be more expensive than chicken, um, uh, for sure. Uh, you can usually just find it in the grocery store, though. It's well worth the price. It has that sweet, delicious god butter if you melt it down, that duck fat. Oh, yes. Yes, please. All right, I'm pretty happy with the viscosity of this, especially once it cools down a little bit. It's going to be nice. Uh, one thing you can do to test the viscosity of your sauce, here's a little... Little pro tip, if you dip a spoon into it, see if I can actually get this on the camera. If you dip your spoon into it and then you run your finger down, you go like this, it's usually the correct viscosity if the line doesn't come back together. If it's not running all over each other, if your line stays, it should usually be a pretty good, um, a pretty good sauce once it's cooled down a bit. Now we're going to add in our spinach. Toothpick works as well, Padoinki. That's also a very good way to go about it. Now, you can also do this with vegetable stock. If you're a vegetarian, you want to do it with broccoli or tofu or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be chicken stock. It just has to be seasoned. Okay. I'm listening to the pan. I can hear there's not very much moisture left, so I know there's browning on the one side. Or at least a little bit. There it is. This is the roux. This will probably be left over, but I'll just cool it down and use it for something else tomorrow or whatever. We're just going to let that continue to cook down, let that spinach get cooked and wilted. Electric's fine. Um, actually, electric has some benefits over gas, too. It's really just what you're comfortable with. I prefer gas myself, but it's all heat. It all causes the same thing. How to store leftover roux properly. Um, it turns into a very hard ball, so you want to make sure it's whatever shape you want. But one thing you can do is put it on like wax paper and make like a disc out of it. Put it in your fridge, and you can just break off a piece if you want it. Yeah, it's very easy to overheat with gas. Like, we got this new stove um, a couple months ago. I'm still not used to how hot or cold the flames are compared to my last stove. The gas and electric do the same cooking and just fine. That's right. Well, I didn't know how lucky I was to have cooks for parents until I got much, much, uh, much older, so I doubt she'll realize it until she's out of the house and is like, hey, I can actually cook for myself.
That's okay. I have uh, I have returned the favor. My my parents showed me how to cook a lot of things, and now I show them how to cook a few things, and it's all in good balance. All righty. Well, I think that's just about done. I'm gonna turn off the heat now. It's definitely fully thick, and we've been ten minutes, and we're just gonna call that. That's our sauce. All right, chicken's almost done. Yeah, just gonna make double sure, cause you never want to have undercooked chicken. You're gonna have bad time. Now let's taste our sauce and see if we want to season it with anything else. You'll know if your roux's not cooked out because it'll taste gritty like flour. It's pretty good. Pretty good. One of my favorite velutes to make, this sounds kind of weird, I like putting chili powder into velute. It makes a really cool sauce. I don't have any chili powder. It doesn't really fit with this, but... Salt. Yeah, you got to cook all the flour out of the food, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Uh, let you guys know a little secret. Chicken has many different kinds of bacteria compared to other meats. Most people that get sick off of chicken do not get salmonella. They get a thing called Campylobacter, which is also a very nasty bug, but it's much, uh, much lower. I'm not too big on pepper, no, bro. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now that we've coughed, we'll wash our hands. I like pepper in moderation. Uh, you can always add more. I don't like to over-salt either. Uh, just a little bit of salt goes a long way. Um, salt and pepper are one of the things that you can add after you cook, so it's not as big of a deal. Okay, my chicken's definitely done. I could have done a better job browning this, but I didn't. It's alright, though. Better to leave it like this than overcook the crap out of it. If you'll notice, if you've been around heavy smokers that are cooks, they're usually pretty heavy-handed on the salt, and especially the black pepper. Uh, I used to work with a guy that made soups, and God, he was a b brilliant, brilliant soup maker, but always heavy-handed on the black pepper. So frankly, I think that's all he could taste after that many years. Thank you, Hex. I do, I do indeed love Tool. Yeah, maybe so, Zekel. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just uh, just the way that the way that it goes. Alright, so I'm literally just going to plate myself up a little bit of this. I'm not terribly hungry. I'll plate up the rest off camera. But I'll just show you basically what we're working with. Uh, ladle's going to be over here. Two drawers down? Got too many drawers in this place. Yes. Yeah, Tool puts on a great live show. I've seen him. I've seen him live five times now. It's always been an amazing one. All right. So let's not use this one. It's chicken juice on it. All right. So let's fluff the rice with a fork a little bit. A nice fluffy rice. There it is. I'm just going to plate it like I would eat it if I was in the middle of a busy shift at work and have time to make it look pretty. Only time to eat. And of course you can make this in pre-made bowls or do whatever you want with it. Whatever you want with it. This is like, this will fill you up and make you feel good at least for a few hours. Not the most glorious food in the world, but you can do so much with this sauce in particular as far as as far as making making food and you can do a ton a ton with rice. You don't want the rice to be watery, no. That's why you let it sit in the in the, the pan for a minute. 
Uh, my dad is a huge Dream Theater fan, Dooney. Yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, I don't really like Boolean cubes, but only keep personally. It looks kind of like curry, but it tastes nothing like it. But once again, that velouté sauce, you can put anything you want. You can put curry in the velouté sauce if you wanted to. Chili powder. Uh, you can put any arrangement of herbs. You can put spinach. It's just, uh, it's just very pure and uh, easy, easy way to add flavor to stuff. And it's not terribly unhealthy. I mean, yeah, that roux is a stick of butter. We used about half of it, but I mean, what's what's a half stick of butter in 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 this much sauce? Like, that's that's not very much fat at all. It's a nice, healthy meal. I don't really care about organic food one way or another. I do enjoy it. It usually tastes better, but that's usually my only determining factor. Well, let's taste it. I'll bet it tastes pretty good. I think if I did it next time, I would have added the minimum amount of water for the rice, but, uh... It's going to taste good. Nice and tasty. Thumbs up. We got there. I'd probably add more stuff to the sauce, but I really just wanted to demonstrate how to make the velouté. You can go anywhere you want there with that. Everybody has their own flavor profile of the kind of Hell, you could put lemon pepper spice into it if you wanted to, if that's a flavor thing that you really enjoy. I know, Padoinky. I know. Just for you. That fork scrape on the teeth. But yeah, uh, a, great, a great thing about cooking and starting simple, um, the, the good thing about it is if you make the sauce a little more bland, you get an idea, what does that taste like? Then if you add something else to it, well, what does that taste like with it? Uh, what does it taste like with this, this, and this? Um, it's better to start simple and layer yourself up and get to those really complex flavor uh, profiles. Yep, simple is usually the way to go. All right, guys, I am. Uh, I'm gonna k kill the cast, and then I'll be uh, logging on downstairs. I'm gonna come back up and eat and uh, clean up a little bit, and then um, we'll get right back to it. So I'll be back in uh, less than two minutes. Just need to load up the stream downstairs, and we'll be back soon. <laughs> 